today's video is gonna walk through my own process about building a lineup for a single entry contest. The only thing I'm gonna do in the home screen here is make two changes to projections. And the reason for that is that if I go straight to build lineups and I change, I make sure my style is GPP, my entry limit is single entry, and I set my number of entrants to whatever they are for my contest here, you'll notice that the start new build button gets grayed out automatically. This is a DraftKings compliance rule and we have to make sure that users make two changes to projections prior to initializing their build. So I'm gonna come in here, make two minute changes here. It's gonna make a change to the 0.0x decimal here and which is gonna have a very small effect on your projections overall here. After I've made that those two adjustments, I'm gonna go back to build lineups. I still have my single entry selected and the start new build button is green. And then from there, I can go ahead and run my lineups. We're in the post build now. And the first thing that I like to do personally here is increase my number of lineups to see a larger bite size snippet of my pool here. Uh, I can see lineup number one and the teams and exposures and you know, stack information, et cetera, regarded to this one lineup. Another thing that I could do is I can go to stack types, team stacks. I can see pool percentage here, right? So this is all of the stack types in across all 500 lineups that we built, but it's kind of a uh, big jump for me to go from looking at one lineup to go and look at 500 lineups. So what I like to do here is maybe look at the top 50 lineups to start, right? And my reason for doing this is I'm able to value Sabre score by doing this. You know, although there are 31% of lineups in the pool that use a 5-3 stack, when we look at the top 50 lineups by Sabre score here, there's actually 44% 5-3 stacks, which is even higher than this pool's pool percentage, right? And then we could play with this number. It doesn't have to be 50. Uh, we could do top 5% of your pool, which would be 25 lineups. We could do the top... 2% of your pool, which would be the top 10 lineups, right? What does that look like? So uh, playing with this number of lineups to see different pieces of my pool is something that I am very fond of. For the sake of this video, I'm going to use the top 10 lineups here, and now I'm ready to begin my analysis here. Uh, one thing that sticks, off to, sticks out to me right off the bat is that eight of our 10 lineups have at least a five stack here and have a large pool percentage. And then we have two lineups that have a uh, four, four stack, which are used in a much smaller percentage of our pool lineups here. So kind of at this point, what I'm trying to do is how do I take this number of 10 lineups and kind of whittle it down to the one lineup that I ultimately want to take with me into my contest, right? So in this analysis, I might end up getting rid of these 4-4 four, four lineups and sticking with a five stack here. Before removing any lineups from my set of 10 lineups here, I'm gonna finish my analysis by jumping over to team stacks here, seeing which teams are coming up most frequently here. And it looks like we are getting Milwaukee in all, ten, all top 10 of our lineups, even though they're only in 20% of our pool here. And then we have New York in 80%, eight out of 10 lineups with them coming in at 32% of our pool. Uh, if we sort by stack pool exposure, New York is our top stack pool exposure. Milwaukee is our second highest stack pool exposure. So all of this is kind of uh, making sense to me so far here. From there, I'm gonna jump over to my players tab and look specifically at my pitchers here. Uh, just one thing to note, you know, we said we made two small changes to projections in the home screen and I said that they wouldn't have too big of an impact on our build and it looks like that is just the case, right? We made two small changes to Charlie Morton and Louis Castillo. However, they are still the top two exposed pitchers in our set of 10 lineups here, coming up with a really high pool percentage for both of them here. So liking what I am seeing so far. Before we move on, I really want to emphasize what we call this right to left approach with analyzing your build in the post build here. We start with stack types, which is kind of a zoomed out view of your lineup. We move down to team stacks by clicking these tabs from right to left on with stack types being furthermost on the right. We move to team stacks. And then lastly, we finally move to players getting into the nitty gritty of your lineup. So starting with the zoomed out approach, working our way uh, closer and closer to players is best practice here. 
One other small nugget of information that I wanna make sure I pass along in this video is that in the stack types, the alt tab can be a little deceiving. So all this tells you is that how frequently a team is coming up as a stack, but it doesn't tell you how many players are being stacked, right? So New York might be our highest stack pool exposure at 32%, but 25% of that can be coming from two stacks and you might think that they're a good big stack, but actually SaberSim is fitting them in better as a two stack than a big five stack. So one thing that I do not want to gloss over here, I want to come into the team stacks tab and just do a quick sweep of these uh, two stack tabs here. So who's coming up most often in the two stacks, the three stacks, the four stacks, and the five stacks here. And what we see is that New York is coming up 20% as a five stack and Milwaukee is coming up at about half that rate at about 9% in the five stacks. So interesting here is that Milwaukee is our top stack exposure at in 10 out of 10 of our top lineups here with New York coming in second. However, I kind of like New York a little bit more as a uh, big stack, right? If we're running like a 5-3, I might want to favor a lineup that has New York in the five stack spot here. At this point, I've determined a couple things about how I want to approach this slate. Number one, I want to use a 5-2 or a 5-3 stack. I want to build my lineup around Milwaukee or New York here. And I also want to have at least one of Charlie Morton or Luis Castillo in my lineups. To work my way down to the lineup that I ultimately want to play, I'm going to take advantage of Saber Sims filters here. These plus and minus magnifying glasses are a good way to find a combination of players, teams, stack types, etc. that you ultimately want to play. The way I like to handle this is using the magnifying glasses to get rid of the lineups I know I do not want to play. So I'm going to use the plus magnifying glass on these two 4-4 four, four stacks. It's going to separate them from the other eight lineups in my set of 10 here. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to use this red trash icon. This will remove both lineups from my set of 10 here. And then once I remove that filter now, I'm left with the other eight lineups that uh, had a five stack here. Similarly, you're gonna go to team stacks. I know I want to play a New York five stack here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the minus icon on the New York five stacks to only see the five stacks with the other teams here, which is Milwaukee and Cleveland. And these five lineups, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these as well. Once I remove this filter, I'm now down to three lineups that all have a Yankees five stack and I can do some further analysis from there. One thing at the bottom, there's an error that says fill to 10 lineups. No, I do not need to fill two 10 lineups. For the sake of this example, let's say I have settled on this number two lineup here. So first thing I'm going to do is use this individual trash icon to get rid of lineup one and then get rid of lineup six here. I'm now left with lineup two. I like everything about this lineup except the fact that I don't want to play Joey Weimer as a nine hole hitter for whatever reason, right? If this lineup has just about everything you want, but it's just you want to switch out one person, the best way to do that is use this pencil icon, click this button, it will pull up the lineup and you can manually swap out any individual player. So if I want to get rid of Joey Weimer here, I'm okay playing a 5-2 stack, as I said earlier, and then I'm going to go and find a hitter who is possibly higher up in the order here. And the first one I see is Tommy Pham batting second for the Mets here within our salary range. We have 3,400 salary available. He is 3,300. I can get rid of Weimer with the X button on the right-hand side. I can add in Tommy Pham with the green plus icon and I can hit save lineup. It will make the adjustment to my lineup. I now have a 5-2-1 stack, and this is exactly what I want here. So that is how you build a single entry lineup. Uh, if you guys have any questions about anything we covered today, don't hesitate to reach out to us at support at sabersim.com. Take care.